Hey everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here. CR Wrestling Commentary. We'll be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 6. We're trying to catch up. It's, 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 it's hard, but we're getting there. We're getting there. All right. We awake. We feel all right. You're on your admin or something like that. Yeah. So we're going to get this done before you got to sprint back to work. So, B block action today. So we've got Michael Bolton Oleg versus El Phantasma. Okay. Stop ruining him. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's Bolton Oleg versus El Phantasmo. I'm just not happy with this. But anyway, Cedra had a question. She was Cedra wants to know why anyone would accept an invitation to the G1 knowing they will never win it. Why? To get paid. Oh, well, there you go. There's, there's a lot. Okay, look. They, New Japan contacts you. Or you contact them. Either way, can I be in the G1 this year? Sure. Or, hey, we're interested in you being in the G1. Or some people here scout it. However the interaction goes to get somebody there. Okay, why would you, as a talent, go there? Why would you want to? Or why would you accept it? Because, one, you get money. All right? That in the capitalistic world, that should be your number one goal because you're getting paid. Number two, and this is equally important, this is the G1 Climax. This is something worldwide known. You, every company is going to have their eyes on the G1. Every company is going to see you. This is your greatest international advertisement possible. And not only will it be your performance that they see in the ring, but it will also be when they contact that company and ask, how was it to work with that person? How did they perform? So it's your resume. This is your resume you're building. I guess my reason why I'm asking this question is this. So you ain't know who's asking the question. There are people who were in the G1 that have won it and one day will win it it's a foregone conclusion it's a damn near guarantee sonata will one day win the g1 okay okay zach saber will one day win the g1 jeff cobb will one day win the g1 el phantasma will not and phantasma will never win the g1 do you know why why Mrs. Whisper? Because he is, even if he, his numbers when he steps on the scale are a heavyweight, he is a lightweight. He moves and carries himself and flips and flops like a lightweight. They are not going to give the G1 to a, basically a lightweight. If they gave it to him, they might as well let Hiromu in. Good point, good point. So why participate in something that you're never gonna win? You're not even contender. They didn't even if you no one even gets the, the feeling like, okay, I can see him winning it. And never crossed your mind you saw him Phantasmo in there. It's like, okay, it's a dude in a slot. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. He'll he'll probably end up, let's see what, uh if there are just ten participants, that means you're gonna get five matches. That means a, a maximum of roughly, what, 10 points? Mm -hmm. I can see him finishing in around six or eight. They'll put him at upper mid-card. I can see that. So, but he's advertising himself. Okay, if you if, if you are still important enough for the G1, then we need to look at you. But the G1 itself, the G1 itself has lost luster over the years. Yeah, because they screwed it up. Like the past eight years, they yes, the the Japanese audience wanted more American wrestlers or guy gene outside wrestlers, so they did that. They fans got what they wanted and hated it, and then they also put the fourth generations in and then just crapped all over them. Yeah, I know all that wisdom, all that experience, and they keep losing. So the fans were unhappy with that. And I was unhappy with that. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. The the G one over those years, roughly as you said, eight years, it lost its luster. It no one really cared. And now they're trying to bring it back. So right now, El Fantasmo and the others in it can get the opportunity and privilege to say, I was I was aiding rebuilding the G one. Okay. It's, it's possible. So Okay, I wrote for Bolton Oleg versus El Fantasmo. This was a classic technical versus power match. ELP hit a nice shoulder suicida, keeping him safe and yet knocking Oleg over the railing. So that was good. That was a good little spot. In the ring, they got their stuff in and it looked really good. Still, ELP does the cutthroat burning hammer as a setup for a diving splash that only got a two count. Oleg does a release F5 over the rope. ELP falls, nearly cracking his head on the apron. And uh, Oleg ultimately hit the steamroller for the one, two, three. It was a match. I'm not happy with El Fantasmo doing his... And, and you know, you pointed out to me his shtick of his heart not in it, not really working to... Like when he was outside the ring fumbling around. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's... Cause I was wondering what's wrong with this boy, and you had to point it out to me. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I can see that, but hey, y'all, look, we argued. I was ticked off because the uploader. I don't know what goes on with the site, but we was watching it, and ELP. We watched it, and the referee is counting. He gets to 19, and I'm like, why ain't dude getting in the ring? And he's just still flopping about like nothing's happened. I was like. How long are you going to hold that 19, bro? Yeah. How long are you going to hold it? And then ELP gets in the ring like 25 seconds later. And I'm like, what? In the I was like, what? I, I saw this. And then, so, CJ was like, he shouldn't have beat the count. So, then we rewound it. And so, then he's counting. He gets to 19. And then he gets in the ring. I was like, okay, that's, that's right. But CJ was used to... A steady count so it's like 18 19 20 that's it and I'm like I've been telling her for months nope it's a long pause between 19 and 20 so this their website screwed up so the sound was off so now when we're watching the show we can't just watch the show in general we have to listen carefully to see if the sound is off because that's what was happening the first time and I wasn't able to catch that because I was like there's two recordings in one somehow so it was all my bad because I was I was pissed and I'm like because I'm not insane this is not the Twilight Zone this isn't child's play you know like, he's coming to kill me no it's all in your head honey no damn it I know what I see <laughs> so yes because uh, I apologize for being pissed because it won't even it won't even us. It was them. And I, that it's annoying because I just want to watch the show. Pretty much like y'all just want to get on with the review. So I'm going to get on. <laughs> so next we get B Block. It's all B Block action. I'm going to call it out. B Block action. Yu Yahweh Murder versus Jeff Cobb. And this, everybody, when Murder, he, he, he's getting up there. He is. He, I'm like, He's just maybe one or two things from he can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but he's getting there. And Cedra had to point out. I didn't hear it. I did not hear it. Just Five Guys is the NWO Japan 32nd opening theme vignette. Yep. It's the it's everything is in there. It's such I'm like, oh y'all got away with that. The music has been revamped, but it's basically the same music. Yeah, it's a cover of the original music. It's a little it's, remix in it. Uh huh. I'm like, all is missing. All is missing is a crowd chanting Hajime. That's all is missing. But yeah, I look like just five guys, and I was like, what? I won't even. I never paid attention to that. But um, that was just awesome. So I'm like, okay. So now I'm feeling better about this. So this is another technical versus power match. Jeff blocked an arm drag and Yuya was 
<laughs> he was surprised. He was surprised. Because you, I love it. When you, if you, if you watch this match and you see that we, uh, you, you tried that arm drag, he went into it like this is happening. He couldn't and, have been any more surprised if somebody walked in on him in the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's how surprised he was. <laughs> that You don't often see facial expressions on the Japanese face. You don't often see it. They sort of try to stay calm, cool, Very collected. Neutral. Yes, but no, he was shocked. Loved it. That was beautiful. And since day one of seeing this new Wemura, I'm like, he looks very Keiji Muto esque. And him and are such Keiji fans. They are. It's just oozing out their pores, man. It is. It is. Except Sonata also, Chono. That, that they might as well be uncles to him. Um, but Jeff, he ate a drop kick and then he did one of his own, and mm-hmm. Yuya just flipped over into the ropes. I'm like, oh, this is bad. And it wasn't even as good as Jeff could do. Yep, when Jeff was heavier, he was jumping higher. Oh my goodness! So he only jumped as high as high as he needed to. Mm-hmm. Then Jeff did a rib breaker, but not what you think. He was dropping him down, but he won't dropping himself. He was raising his knee. He, he was raising his knee and raising Uemura like he was a weight of some sort and dropping him down on his raised knee. Yes. As a display of power, I will use you to get my reps in. <laughs> <laughs> and then he threw you your way like he was nothing. Yes. I'm like, oh boy. And I'm like, you just got to win this match though. That's that's why I started thinking he, he's got to win this match. So Yu Yu lowers the, the lowers the bridge, causing Jeff to fall to the floor. Well, they were about 50-50 on damage, but Yu Yu he, he had to mainly escape the floor. Yeah, you know it was like 50-50, but he started being in Jeff's favor. And then Cobb caught a cross body, rolled it over onto his feet, then slammed Yu Yu, then missed the standing moonsault. But his shin landed on Yu Yu's leg. Yeah. It was bad. I was like, oh, you could tell Yu Yu was like that hurt. That hurt, but I I, I, I got to move on. <laughs> Yuya hit a, and I was like, what? He hit a flashing elbow, and I was like, mm-hmm. I can tell, you could tell he's been practicing it. He's yeah. been practicing. I was like, that is so early KG Muto style. He's, when he gets better, it's going to look awesome. Mm-hmm. So, and I wrote, my words are, Yuya hit a flashing elbow, and thus highly elevated himself in my eyes. More than he already was. And I'm already high on Yuya. If Yuya go to AEW, I'm like, man, I'm about, I'm, I might fire him. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to hire him and fire him real quick so I ain't got to pay him because I ain't got any money. But Yuya, he does all that he can trying to pin Cobb. German suplex, dragon suplex, frog splash, all two counts. Cobb pours on the power, but not for long. Cobb hit the, the return tour of the islands and pins it with Mura. Mm-hmm. Damn good match. Very good match. Damn good match. And I'm going to tell y'all this. If you watch most matches, I could easily put that as a four star, but it wasn't. That was a three star match. It was pretty much where it should be because I know from what I saw, they could do so much more. I saw it. I was like, they. They, they just sold me. Those two could put on the five-star match. I saw it. Mm-hmm. I saw it. So I'm good. I'm good on that. Next, B-block action. Konosuke Takeshita versus Hinari. I'm like, oh my, this, this, this block right now, all the matchups are looking beautiful. Yeah, this was an awesome match. This is an even match of striking and power with Konosuke having top... Uh, ha- having to, uh, to, to, to top rope bite Hinardi to keep any modicum of an advantage. It was back and forth, but Kanosuke was kind of getting met up, you know. Hinardi's got a ball head, and ball heads are prime for biting. That's Always. Just... you got. That's why, you, you, look, if you're a wrestler, grow your hair so you don't get bit. Just, just, if you got to wear a hair piece, just, just wear it as long as you can. Don't get bit. Just don't get bit. That that is not professional advice or nothing like that. But <laughs> just saying, don't get <laughs> don't get bit. Avoid the biting. <laughs> Yo, yeah, try to avoid that on your record. Don't get bit. Just having fun here. In order to deliver the shining wizard in the corner, but that was counted into a power bomb. What 
was counted into a rolling Frankensteiner. So I'm like, okay, they 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 know what to do. Yeah. Kanosuke, uh he performs a poison Frankensteiner that Hinati ate, and then he hit a lifting slam. I'm like, and I looked at TJ, I said, there it is. I said, I, I said in one of these uh day one to three, I said, they're gonna start not selling the poison runner. And here they go. Yeah. And I'm like, come on now. You know, originally that had to be performed off the top rope because that was the safest way to do it. Now they figured out how to do it, but it's still. Woo. Yeah, it's still iffy looking. Kanosuke hit a massive lariat for a point five count. <laughs> and then the Blue Thunder Bomb for a two count. Hard hits, hard slams, equal wow factor in ability. Hanade hit um the spinning back kick he caught that but then he got caught with an elbow strike and he just melted he did and i'm i'm glad that you don't see the wrestlers sell like that often on large strikes like that not all of them do it and that's good kanosuke hit the jumping knee and hanari flung his head like a missile Head button Kanosuke for a two count. Yeah, that was serious right there. I enjoy, I thought that looked so good. Um, Kanosuke hit the spinning falcon arrow for the three count. That match could have gone another forty minutes if they wanted to. Yeah, it was it was great. That yeah, those two they did great. And Cedric had to remind me when we was watching New Japan, Hanari was. He was a, a young lion. He was a young lion. I forgot all, he was going all them battles with Ishii and stuff. He's like, you know how this going to go. That was the line right there. Mm -hmm. and, and then he got hurt in that he, match. Yeah. No, but he didn't get hurt in that match. He didn't. I thought he got hurt in that match because Hinari spent a lot of his time as a young lion injured. We first saw Hinari in a young lion match with other young lions. Mm. And he got hurt when he tore his Achilles. And he was gone for like a year. Yeah, he came and back. And he came back. And he had to go through his young... He didn't... It's like he came back and it's like... You're going to have to just ignore that. Yeah, he came back. And by the time he went through that with Ishii, he was well past any injury. He was already out of his young yeah, lion clothes. What I'm saying is when he, when he came back... He did his young lion stuff. He was, it was like almost a, a couple of new young lions in the in the group. Mm -hmm. But then I think after four six months, that's when he started his thing with Ishii. Yeah. And I guess Ishii was his mentor, Maybe. or he selected his mentor, or whichever. But they was feuding. Yeah. And that's when he was in the ring, and he, and he yelled out, "You know how this gonna go?" I don't. And mean. I think that was their third or fourth match, and it was a tag match. Yeah, because he kept going. It's like you know, leave me alone, dude. And he kept going after Ishii. I, uh -huh. I just don't remember him getting hurt. Maybe Ishii's he did. like, you know, you gone little dog, and Hinata's like, no, nah, I'm a big dog that keeps getting beat. <laughs> but, yeah, he won't injured like that. He, I said he got hurt. He won't say he was injured. He just got okay, hurt. Well, when I hear hurt, I'm like, okay, you're gonna be on the shelf. Otherwise, you're just wrestling. You no, know? you can wrestle hurt. You just can't wrestle injured. Yeah, you, you know, you're just working. Otherwise, it's you know not really notable <laughs> hurt is when you're shooting you know like cortisone and stuff into your foot or your knee just trying to make it work injured you know you the cortisone ain't gonna work you just got the deal you got to stay off you got to you on the shelf you you know you're a collectible toy now mm -hmm. you know uh but after the match Kanosuke he offered the fist to Hinata who gave him the dap of respect and, and the fans cheered for it and I had to note, damn good match. Four stars only. I can see a five star easy in them. This is just a taste of what they could do in that ring. And I was I was happy. We get more B block action. Ren Nadita versus David Finley. This was almost a mess. Yeah. Um not in a bad way either. It was a mess in a good way. It was baddie on baddie crime. Yeah, like Naito and Evil. It was a mess, but it was it was a good mess. Mm -hmm. It was just a mess. <laughs> um, they fight outside of Naruto and Finley. They fight outside for the most part. And with the ref distracted, Rin uses the chair on David. The ref gets distracted again, and Yoshinobu attacks David on the apron. David, 
hit a release spinning blue thunder bomb. I just threw him off, just threw him away, threw mm-hmm. Ren away. Like, I'm like, how strong is this dude? And then he delivered uh, the cactus clothesline, putting both of them to the outside. Yeah. So there, uh, David, he used a fireman's carry toss to send Ren's head into the post. Ren hit a nice suplex hold, and when David kicked out on two, Ren flowed into a guillotine choke that, in time, and it took a while, David escaped. Yeah, he had to work for it. But the only thing I don't like is after that, David wasn't selling that guillotine choke. You lose your air for that long, it's hard to breathe for that long. You ain't going to just pop up and start fighting. So they was, it seemed like they was under time constraints. And that's something you don't need to do. When you, if you're going to have a time limit like that, you can't do a choke to prolong the match. You, you can't. you got to sell the choke. It's a strangulation, damn it. Um, Ren had a nice choke on David, then throws him into an exposed corner. I don't, know, I don't know when that corner got exposed, but he got exposed, and then he applied the choke again. Then David got free. The ref got distracted. Nobu spits whiskey in David's face, allowing Ren to roll him up for only a two count. The ref is down. He got blasted. The ref is down. David used the shillelagh to beat the hell out of everybody. Mm-hmm. Then David hit the KN bomb for a three count. And KN, Kevin Nash, Cedric did that. That's it what was it, a, was. it was. It was like a lazy man's power bomb. Nash won't. It, it, it was lazy, but it was also cool because he hoist them, hoist them up. And he would toss him away to, for, to perform a perfect flat back bump. Yeah. But Kevin Nash would also throw his hands down like he tried to powerbomb him. So it was a, you know, protect him and all that. And plus, if he did a spike powerbomb at his height, yeah, that, that's pretty much an 80% chance of injury if, if Nash did that. Why are you holding the mic like that? So that can be heard. Oh, okay. Because you're holding it down so far looking at me. And I'm yeah, just when like, I'm about to world? speak, I try to raise it up. Okay. Okay. I'm going to shut the hell up about it then. Okay. <laughs> so, main event, B-block action. Yota Suji versus Hiroki Goto. Uh, okay. So, how can I say this? This match is good. It's Ah, ah, this. I'll, I'll just, I'll just say it at the end. Okay, so from the beginning, this was simply a good wrestling match, and I call Suji because he, uh, his smile. I call him Teeth Malone. Um, I'm not gonna go to where I read. No, okay, so good. they got, they got that stuff in, but it bothered me that Goto was doing a ton of selling. Selling too much can be a sign of a loss in New Japan. So that's what that's why that was bugging me. So Yota, he gains control and the fans get solidly behind Goto. Goto hit the Ushiroshi, but he has to convalesce. Cool. They fight back with a strike exchange. Not exactly a good stri- strike exchanges just don't look good anymore. It's hard to find a good one. Um, Goto hit the Enzui GTR. But that was as a counter before landing a lariat. Okay. Suji does a curb stomp. Kind of messed up. So he had to go at it again. Then he got it. Then he went for the pin. Two count. Goto has a hard time recovering as Yota smiles, boasts, and put the fans behind Goto even more. So he's doing his, Suji's doing his job. Mm -hmm. He's healing it up. Um, And it's amazing what it takes to be a heel in Japan. It's, you know, they view back in the 80s and, and early 90s, they view American, well, U.S. style heels as barbaric people, just barbarous. But heels there, you got to be cocky, arrogant. And you got to show, you can't just walk it and no, you got to like slam, beating on Goto and then having that smile. That ticked the fans off. Mm hmm. You know, stuff like that. It's amazing what it takes to be a heel there. But Suji was, he had the fans riled up. Um, now they won't try to come over the railing or, or, or issue death threats, but he, he had them ticked <laughs> off. Um, yeah, the stop the show this for, to, to receive a death threat. Excuse me, would you take this letter? Thank you. 
<laughs> <laughs> Take the time to read it. Hey, man, he said he was going to kill me. He, look, he in the crowd looking at you with that head now like, mm-hmm. Pointing. Angry. Yep. You. Mm-hmm. It don't I take mean, too much time. It's either a death threat or you're going to get hand banana. I don't know. It's going to be one of them. Either way, it takes too much time. <laughs> <laughs> Su- Suji hit a stiff jumping knee that melts Goto before uh, um, applying a fireman's carry bomb for a two count. Um... Then, now why in the hell did it? Okay, so Goto got a surge of energy just enough, but that was cut short with a thrust kick. And that, that messed Goto up. That was good, but then Goto counters Suji with the GTW suplex with the Lariat for a two count. Okay, and I'm like, where's this going? And then... A brief lull happened. It was weird. It was like two seconds. Neither wrestler was down. But it was almost a vacuum. You could feel it. And then Goto was like, we going into this. It was weird. I'm watching. I'm like, what just happened? Like something sucked the, not the life, but the energy out the arena. And everyone just got quiet. It wasn't an audio thing. It was like, Goto was like, here we are. And he hit this stiff middle kick. And he popped the hell out of Yota with it. And Yota got up like, you lost your damn mind. You could see. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and Goto stuns him again. And then he hit the Shoten Kai for a near three count. I'm like, okay, he to pull that out. And then Goto eventually, not long after, because it was a fierce fight. Goto hit the GTR and he hit that with authority and he got the three count. Yep. Goto had to work hard for this. Suji didn't make it easy. No, he didn't. And I had to know Goto did everything he could to win. This was a four star Goto match. And that's the issue. Goto did great. He didn't carry the match like he could, but he did great. And the problem is. In the past years that we've been watching him, these past, I'll say, seven years, this is Goto going all out. And that's the problem. Because what I've seen of him, this is his limit. Not unless he can do better, but New Japan's like, well, we're not going to give you this type of match. We, you're not going to have this title match. We're not going to let you win this belt. He's a former champion. So, you know, maybe Goto's like, look, this is my... Main event, four-star, non-title match. You want me to really go all out? Give me something to go all out for. Could be. You know. And, he, th- and you know, he put Suji over. He really put Suji over. So, I, I'm concerned. So, I don't know exactly how to judge this on Goto. That's where I'm at. That's why I'm like, ah, I don't know. Because I know he could do better. Right. And I've seen this as his high standard but he pulled out everything to win this match and yuta suji yota suji is not that far from being a graduate young lion no he's not but consider this i I don't know uh what suji's mom ate when she was pregnant but he a big dude yeah goto is not a big dude no and it makes sense for it to be an uphill battle for Goto. To me, Suji's good. Yeah. And with his size and his strength, it makes sense for it to take a lot to take him down. If he had got just one of his, you know, mid-card finishing moves and, and finished, it would have been like, huh? Good point. But Goto, I think maybe this was Goto having the ability to display... These are all that I can do, and I innovated every single one of these. Every one of them he innovated. And keep talking about, you know, the, the, the last generation and this generation, and maybe he's trying to display, you know, how still credibly viable he is. I hope so, because if I was in the New Japan office, I'd be like, why have we been sleeping on Goto? That's what I'd be wondering. Everybody else be tucked in. So, you know... I mean, that, that that can do it for the show if you want. You, okay. you, you good? Okay. Yeah. This has been Cedric Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary. 
reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34 Day 6. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And we'll certainly see you next time.